Apple's MacBook Pro with Retina Display is one of the most powerful and portable laptops on the market, and its screen's pretty nice too. But in today's episode of Cracking Open, I'll show you why it's also nearly impossible to upgrade, a real pain to work on, and lacks what many consider an essential pro feature. There's a lot to like on the Retina MacBook Pro. It's thinner and lighter than the traditional MacBook Pro. It has two USB 3 ports and a full-sized HDMI port. It sports an Intel Ivy Bridge Core i7 processor and an NVIDIA GT650M graphics chip. And as its name implies, it has a gorgeous 2880 by 1800 resolution Retina display. Unfortunately, as I mentioned in the intro, all of these positives are offset by some serious negatives. For starters, this is the first MacBook Pro with pentalobe case screws. You know those annoying tamper-resistant screws used on the MacBook Air and iPhone 4S? Apple doesn't want you inside this machine, and once I popped off the back cover, I saw why. Unlike the standard MacBook Pro, which is designed to be upgraded and serviced by you, should you so choose, the Retina MacBook Pro isn't. How so? Well, let's start with the battery. Instead of being a single, removable unit, each cell is glued to the machine's case. This makes the battery nearly impossible to remove without damaging it or the components underneath. It also means you can't get to the components under it, like the trackpad. The situation doesn't really get any better when we look at the motherboard. There's a proprietary solid-state drive, which means you won't be able to swap it out for a larger, third-party one, and the RAM is soldered to the motherboard, so you won't be upgrading that either. And if all this wasn't enough, Apple also dropped two features that set the MacBook Pro apart from the thinner but less professional MacBook Air, an Ethernet port, and optical drive. Now, I don't think losing the optical drive will anger many Pro fans. I have an optical drive on my 2011 Pro and can't remember the last time I used it. But the Ethernet port is another matter. When I asked Tech Republic members if they or their coworkers still needed machines with an Ethernet port, a resounding 88% said yes. Sure, you can use a Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter, but that's one more thing you need to buy and carry. Honestly, this new machine is more like a MacBook Air than a MacBook Pro. And as such, you'll need to plan your purchase carefully. It may be pricey, but make sure you buy all the RAM, storage, and processing power you'll need for the life of the machine. Now, as of this taping, Apple still sells traditional 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pros, Ethernet ports, optical drives, and all. But I can't imagine they'll keep both Pro lines around for very long. Once the price of solid state drives and the Retina display are low enough, all MacBook Pros will probably look like this one at least until all that hardware will fit into an Air. Now, for more information on the Retina MacBook Pro, including performance and battery life benchmark tests, check out Dan Ackerman's full CNET review. And to see more teardown photos and read my full hardware analysis, go to techrepublic.com forward slash cracking open. I'm Bill Detweiler. Thanks for watching.